Hello students, welcome back. Let us continue with chapter 14 statistics. We will take a look at a new topic that is presentation of data. So what are the topics we covered so far? Introduction, collection of data. So once your data has been collected, what you are going to do is you are going to organize it or present it because statistics is about collection, organizing, analysis and interpretation of data. So this is the st second step. So you may present your data in different ways. One of the ways could be ascending or descending order, ungrouped frequency or group frequency. These will be in the form of tables, so we will say tabular format. Now, to explain this, the first section that is ascending, descending, I have an example uh, extracted from page 240 of your textbooks, example number 1. So here, consider the marks obtained by 10 students in a mathematics test as given below. So here are the marks that 10 students secured. Student 1 got 55, student 2 got 36, the other student got 95 and so on until student 10 got 62 marks. So now all this data is in the form of raw format. Just let me uh, extract a chalk. So if you notice all this data is in raw format. Raw format is let's say when a uh, let us say the process of extracting sugar from sugar cane. So, sugar cane is raw. It undergoes a lot of processing before sugar is extracted. So, this is your output. So, now you have data in a very haphazard random format. It is not organized at all. If I wanted to pick up the student who secured the lowest marks and the highest marks, it would be very difficult finding out, finding out from this data. That is, I will have to check this and compare with the rest of the numbers. So the best way to do this is to find the highest, lowest or the person who got somewhere in the middle marks. What I am going to do is I am going to rewrite this data. To see, this is in raw format. I am just going to rewrite it in ascending or descending order. So what I am going to do is, I am just going to write it in ascending order. So ascending is, means from lowest to highest. So let us see which is the lowest mark out here. You have 25. Then after 25, the other one is 30. So I am just going to underline the ones that I have picked up already. So 36. Then after 36, I have 42. Then after 42, I have 55. After 55, there is 60. Then there is 62. Then there is 75. Then 78. Uh, then 73. Oh, there is there is 73 first. So I'm going to underline this. Then there is 75. And then there is 78. And finally, there is 95. So now the data has been organized in ascending order. How? See, this is the lowest mark and this is the highest mark. So I've gone in increasing order. And let's just confirm whether the counts is the same. So this was the score for 10 students. Let's check whether this count is also 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So now extracting the details of students who scored the lowest marks or lowest mark is 25 whereas the highest is 95. So highest marks. See how simple this was, right? Now the difference between the lowest marks and highest marks is called the range. So now this was uh, since we were dealing with the marks secured by students, we say lowest marks and highest marks. But it would not always be marks, it could be data pertaining to other values. So you can either say the difference between the lowest observation and the highest observation or the difference between the highest and lowest values is going to give you the range. So range is 95 minus 25 which is going to be 0 and 7, so 70. And this is the difference between the highest and lowest observation. So here what was happening is we were dealing with a few collection of data or number of observations. But let's say you have a lot of data, let's say about a school, then it would be impossible to arrange your data in ascending and descending order uh, 
you, without a machine. You would need a machine for it, right? So now we are going to proceed forward with grouped and ungrouped frequency. These are nothing but representation, uh, representation of your data in a tabular format and they are going to group your data. So although the name suggests ungrouped frequency, it's actually grouping of your data, but we will see how. So for that we have example 2 on page 240 of your textbooks itself. Let's read it out. Consider the marks obtained out of 100 by 30 students of class 9 of a school and here are the marks. Here are the marks for how many students? 30 students. Now just imagine organizing just these 30 observations in ascending descending order. It was going to take a lot of time, efforts, patience and first of all if it, towards the end also you would not be sure whether you've done it right or not. So for to overcome that problem you have another uh, form of representation of your data that is ungrouped frequency. So in ungrouped frequency, I'm just going to write the marks, all the marks that are present, okay? Just once. So if I have duplicate recalls, for example, I have 50 and 50. I'm going to take that count only once and you will see how we are going to present this data. So, and I'm going to go from lowest to highest. So 10 is gone. So 10, which is the other number greater than 10? 20. Then which is the other lowest number that we can see? It is 36. So I write down 36. So I'm just writing down all the marks from lowest to highest. Then I have, okay, so 36 is gone again over here. Which other number is the lowest? After 36, we have 40. So 40. Then which is the other number that we have? There's nothing in for so 50. Then after 50, we have 56. And after 56, do we have anything in 50s? No. Then 60. And we have 70. Then we have 72. Then we have, after 72, the larger number is going to be 80. Then we have 88. And after 88, we have 92. And after 92, we have 95. So any other number greater than 95, see what I have done here is I have taken unique values even for duplicate records. Though 50 was present two times, I have written it just once. Though 56, we had another 56, did we? Yes, 56 was present two different, at two different instances. Instances I have mentioned it only once because here I am just writing down the marks that were obtained. We are not taking the number of marks in this call, the number of times that marks though, or that particular mark appeared. Right? Now we are going to say the number of students who secured 10 marks. So let's see the number. So I am going to use a different colored chalk. Number of students who secured 10 marks. There is just one student okay so one now in 20 so let's see the number of records the number of times that 20 is there that is the number of observations right of 20 so you have 20 just again once then let's see for 36 36 is present one two two times and another one three times Let's see 40. 40 is present 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 times. Then what about 50? 50 is present 1, 2, 3. That's it, 3 times. Then 56. 56 is present 1, 2, and two times. Then 60. 60, 1, 2, 3, 4. So four times. Then 70. So let me take a look at 70 in the first row. 1, 2, 3, 4. So four times. Then 72 in the first row. No, in the second row. Yes, once. 
and the third row none, so just one. What about 80? 80 in the first row, no, 80 in the second row, yes. So 80 once, just once. Then 88 in the first row, no, 88 in the second row, yes, one. And in the third row as well, yes, so two. Then again 88, oh, this was for 88. Then we have 92. So 92 in the first row, yes, in the second row, yes, so yes, yes, and yes, three times. And finally, 95, and 95 is apparently the last record that is left. So I'll just make a box, okay? And it's present just once. So now I'm going to write down the total to ensure that the number of students is what that's given, whether it's 30. So let's count 1, 2, 2 plus 3, 5, 5 plus 4, 9, 9 plus 3, 12, 12 plus 2, 14, 14 plus 4, 18, 18 plus 4, 22, 23, 24, 26, 29 and plus 130. So, this is the total number of records. So, see how we grouped the students. Here we did not group the marks. We have just written the marks individually, even for duplicate values, but we have grouped the students on the basis of marks secured by them. This kind of table is known as ungrouped frequency because we are not grouping the marks out here. That is on the basis of which we are grouping the number of students. In group frequency, you will see how we are grouping even the marks and the number of students. So I hope you've got an idea of what ungrouped frequency looks like. Now see, there's another thing that I would, uh, I would like to mention, you, mention to you is that counting these numbers, let's say, see this was just a single record, this was single record, that was pretty simple. But now what about the records that are four, then three, then again two over here. We had to keep it in our mind. We had to keep counting one, then two, then keep adding to get three, four marks. So again, for this amount of data, it was very simple, right? But still it was getting a little tedious. Now we will learn later about tally marks while we are doing grouped frequency, how to draw tally marks and just write the data accordingly. So organization and analysis become simple. And also what we can interpret uh, from this data, so this is data in raw format. We have organized it. We have done an analysis of the records of the students who belong to different categories. And what do we infer? That the minimum number of students belong to categories with marks 10, 20, 70, 72, and 95. And the lowest mark secured is I'm sorry, that, that was 72, okay? So these were the, low, uh, these were the marks where student, uh, the number of students was just one. And the marks secured by the student, the, high, the highest category is for which marks? 40, 60, and 70. So students in this, these three categories secured the highest number of marks. So this was our interpretation. So please take a look at this, and we will take a look at group frequency in the forthcoming lecture. Thank you. Hope this video increased your knowledge. For more such videos and a completely free educational content, log on to www.epathshala.org or visit our Epathshala YouTube channel. We have each and every question solved for maths, physics, chemistry and biology. So subscribe our channel, share with your friends, like our Facebook page and follow our Twitter handle for regular updates and important educational tips and also win Epathshala goodies. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe this channel and enjoy the freedom of education.